I've got an armoury in Nottinghamshire, no, Northamptonshire, to send a 410 TDR, which stands for Take Down Rifle, to the gunsmiths in Chichester, called the Chichester Armoury, where my transaction will take place. I'm very pleased to have secured one. They've finished manufacturing the weapon and they've upgraded it to a shrouded barrel um, and a side lever cocking, which side le lever cocking is fine, but um, a shrouded barrel is fine too, but it does make the whole thing a lot heavier, whereas uh, this takedown rifle is only 2.8 kilos, something like that, 2.6, and um, ideal for my wife and son to use. Um, let me show you what I just take out. This, this goes to the single phase board there with no uh, there. So it's a strange cable. Um, I think it's armoured, but they've. Well, it's not armoured, is it? It's just got multiple. It's very strange because this is one size, the neutral is another size. And that's 16. Anyway, that, that went in and was connected, not onto the bottom of the fuse switch, which had nothing on it, but bypassed the fuse switch and was in here. Well, it didn't matter that much because there's a, a breaker upstairs, but why they bothered to put the fuse switch in in the first place beats me. Anyway, I'm taking this all out and I'm going to put a few small free phase boards here, which I've got. The good way the decency of the staff within it because they haven't been pulled somewhere other than... It's Proteus. So it says horizontal free phase board. I'm going to take this out because I've got isolation on the fuse switch anyway. And I don't need a 100 amp switch here. So that frees up a bit more space for... Um, circuits. So motor's going to take three out, then you're going to have one to the single phase board and um, RCBO, and then I might need a couple upstairs, so I need to move two spare. So. You meet me on Thursday night. Uh, this morning I woke up, the day started bad and went worse. Um, couldn't find my van key. The other keys, key was uh, stolen, so I couldn't find my van key. And um, turns out I probably left it in St Paul's Cathedral last night when we went up to London by train or it dropped out in the train or something. Phoned up Locksmith, he phoned up another locksmith who's here at the moment and his name's Grant. And he's in this really cool van. Willy oh. thinking has, and he's got a little machine in there, a milling machine, and he's, he found out the codes and everything for the van. Anyway, it's seven o'clock at night now, and uh, I went and he's just rooted the cable. I think his third key. Pretty well third finished rooting attempt. the cable, and realised. Well, I'll show you. Okay, so this is where we are. Uh, we've got a. Two protective devices in here. Uh, the sheaths all earthed. Oh, what she I got? with Grant is kind of carrying out his personal life at the same time. I'm wondering whether I should get a third key, you know, I might ask him. And um, yeah, so luckily I dropped off I didn't realize.
realise you could get someone. I, I thought I was going to have to change all the locks. It was going to be a grand. I was going to have to take out some insurance next year and fiddle it. But uh, with the RAC, but um, it's absolutely marvellous. And a brand new uh, electronic key. Oh, the old one was getting long in the tooth, and uh, got a brand new one now. It's absolutely makes it makes it feel like a new car. And that that van has got to last me. It's done 103,000, but due to unforeseen circumstances of the last year or so. Um, I've just got to keep going, so keep going with it. I'm just waiting for the magnetic pin guide and the fittings from FFX. And FFX are these guys, Folkestone fixings, and uh, they've got a, a lead time on, on the spit components, which isn't very good. Uh, because I've started that job already, uh, but never mind. Sorted for tomorrow. I've got a full day putting the board in and maybe do some other stuff. And then I've got to get um, a pre-EICR done in a tower block on Saturday, which I've got to fit that in in the afternoon after I've spent the day wiring up the tractor shed at the sailing club so whew. once I put this up I've taken out um, a feed from there it's going to go from here and then the tails are going I got here. the four millimeter submain rooted in the shed drill. Uh, um, hole drills, from three holes. Stone pillar with some pillar cleats on it. Side cutters. In under the eaves of the tractor shed. If you see in there. And then there's a ledge which is protected, um, stop the capped cuts. off, so there's no jagged metal. Uh, nip through those and just create a slot that will stop the stop the eddy currents from flowing. And the from rising. The speed with which this engages is pretty vicious and I've operated the thing about 20 times which um, in normal lifetime it wouldn't it wouldn't be switched on and off a huge amount. And what I found was it, um, because of my cable routing, it started mashing up my conductors, sheaths. So I've had to reroute some of them, which is why they look a little bit higgledy piggledy, um, because some of them have to go outside the main bus bar, which moves. Um, well, not bus bar, but. And then they go through these um, adapters, which, I, and I've cut a slot all the way down, so um, there's no eddy current possible there. And I've just helped it along with a, a bit of hot melt glue there, 160 degree hot melt glue, just to keep them in place um, while I while I routed the cables. And really, w what this is is a high quality. Um, fitting and I'll just show you that when you, engage, when you engage it it really slams down and what I found was um, it, where I'd rooted cable down the back there then it interfered Oop, hello hi Felice hello. you're back just popping in to see how you're getting on okay just explaining the Right, with the, the arm just fitted inside there, the fuses cable tied up a couple of cable tied screw down in places. I mean, steel cable tied on the fence. And I've it's removed safety. the barbed wire where it was in danger of being in contact with the, the armor. So, altogether, okay. two. I've been here for 
the, the kachunk. It's that old kachunk that they they always put in films when lights go out. They always put that noise in, even though they wouldn't make that noise. Right, we've got the lift motor to extend into my C10. Got an RCBO 40 and I've got a C40 RCBO to take the, the main to the feed to the other circuit board which we're just leaving in situ as is. Right, the time has come to try out this. I've got some 40 millimeter nails here, so this is the first time we'll try it. We've tried it. So I take the cover off the gas here, I guess. There we go. Throw that in the pile of junk. There we go, pressed in. And then the battery, which I've charged, goes in like that. So the indicator lights are there. Show us we've got battery and gas. Now we load the nails in the magazine. That's pushing forward now. So keep that up that end. Load the magazine back into the gun. I don't suppose there's any reason to take the magazine out to do this. And then put that wide forward. Now we're fully charged and ready to go consume unit there. So these tails, I'm just going to put a couple of clicks in, that's that's the job. Not particularly saving on time here because it's just a little trial for the gun. So I'm putting these clips in. standby mode. It won't go into my hand because I'm not pressing down on the pin guide. When I fully press down on the pin guide it can fire. So it's not cocked at the moment. So push fully down on the pin guide and then there we go. It's a 17 mil nail and it hasn't gone right in. So I need to change the setting on it, obviously, for the next one, although that would be okay for there. Um, where's another saddle? Oh, it's difficult getting in there. I bet there's loads of people going, oh, I'd rather through the hole. That has just banged out a load of cement, so they're not long enough really. They are not long enough. That's held in place anyway, isn't it? By the it's held in place by the RSJ which theoretically I could also have nailed into with this. I wonder if I need another one here to tidy it up. What do you think? No, I don't think so. It would be good to have that a bit closer there, though, wouldn't it? Hey, let's try another 40. 40 works in that one, so I'll, I'll put another 40 in. Right. So we take the old nail back. Those are the small ones. Um, 
puts in some of these mega huge nails. Okay. And we put it on to slam it in hard mode. Right, stand by. There we go. That went in good, good long way, eh? that did. It's not perfect, but I tried it. I need 20 mil nails to go in there. It's quite a hard wall. Well, that in total is four and a half hours work. I know what you think of that. Four and a half hours so so far um we've got this isolator was moved from here and i moved the phone down and then sorted the cabling out here took the motor flex up here into this board so it's now fused down to 10 with a C10 MCB because before it was just directly off these. Now I'm going to have to go back to the office and go on the internet to go, go over my video to see what the phase rotation, what the, the colours of the, the uh, conductors were, if I can see it coming off here. Because I, if I don't really want to get this thing working backwards, this hydraulic pump in there, I don't want it to be going around backwards. So I need to see if I can work out what it was before. It's something I'm, I, I should have noted down. Um, then I've got this um, 40 amp C40 uh, uh, RCBO with 10 mil coming out of it, uh, just to be on the safe side. Got 10 mil coming in and forming the tails to feed this board. As it was before but of course it's residual, residually um, additionally protected um, now being on that 40 amp RCBO. The tails, well this comes at, believe it or not from a 60 amp MCB in the dining room comes down this massive 25 mil cable and then what I've got here is 16 mil tails I think they're 16 mil I've used um, so 16 mil tails out of there and they're rooted after snapping it on closed and open 20 times to see what caught if anything and it did I caught I caught quite a bit so I rerouted it and now it's it's safe to use um, without um, being in danger of damaging the conductors so, yeah, everything's perfect in there. Uh, and now I've got on video somewhere, and I think it was when I was doing the R1, R2 test from that board upstairs down to this uh, fuse switch. And this is the frame in question which shows the colours are grey on the left, black in the middle and brown and this is the motor flex that was wired straight into the 63 amp fuses so that 2.5 is grey, black, brown so it is useful having the whole EICR on on video um, because you can always remember back and get a frame, but it did take a long time. So, grey, black, brown. I'll just check that again. Black and 
brown. on the submain to there but it's really got to a stage where I need to clear up because I'm looking for my uh, crocodile leads I've got one over here but the one I was just using seems to have disappeared just look at this mess So, R1, R2, put the cover on. Not throwing all this mess of screws on for this cover. Need to do my perspective fault currents and everything, but I can't do that until I've found my lock-off keys, and I don't know where I put the lock-off keys. So I'm going to start putting stuff back into my case. Here we've just got punches, a number of different size punches, which I find very useful, and indispensable are my three scribers, which I find indispensable. There's a small level there, a number of small files in there, I don't use much, a Jakari, a cable stripper, my electrician surgeon's tweezers, um, pipe wrench, and side cutters in here. Now there's not really enough room for everything I put in, there's a, there's a paintbrush in there for sweeping stuff up. Um, but you see why I have to wear a head torch? to unpack this because you can't really see that very well being black and I've lost one of them this week like I say I paid £29 for them originally now they're about 18 I think I bought the price down but I have replaced them all free of charge since um, pretty well all got broken and been replaced free of charge because they do have a lifetime guarantee on them um, another screwdriver going in here um, oh, another set of uh, pipe wrenches. Yeah, so I've got two two sets of pipe wrenches in this. Uh, this has replaced one of my clients. Um, I can't remember who makes these. Um, it's quite nice, but it's a bit. Bu um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, special. Uh, okay, so it's, it's 
see this the um, climb I have some of those pliers but I had a bit of an explosion on the tip but they've been slightly damaged um, into an explosion um, what else what else what else um, climb cable cutters they're my go-to cable strippers my go-to wrench with a parallel sided uh, jaws, an Ipex, about 50 quid a pair, bought for me by my son, but kind of put on the account anyway, a couple of years back, or three or four years back. CK Electrician Scissors, indispensable again, indispensable um, tool. It's going up there now. So, um, yeah, that sold. They sold up. Here's in the pen. And you see how we're beginning to run out of space. My Google Tech Plus, which I really took out. I, because I never carry my sockets down with me, and sometimes they're not even on the van, this has really got me out of a few tight spots. It doesn't fit in there at the moment. And what else have we got? These things are indispensable now. I don't know what we did without them. Jakari knife. Um, again, cable stripping equipment. Um, good set of CK um, cable cutters. I had a pair about double the size, which didn't last. Uh, these have lasted. useful knife again got a number of things now but the brand came missing so these uh, are goes in here is um because what else we got a walkie marker now being superseded by a marker I have in the van but have not yet used and so I suppose not really superseded yet I think that's the main hand tools um yeah, pencil, screws need to go in there, PPE, and then these go in the back. So, through the back, yeah, you see that nail really wasn't long enough to go through and penetrate. All it was long enough to do was um, blow out the cement it went into. So, nice empty cavern in the back. What I normally do is I do up these shock screws. I've got these shock waves which are getting in a skate on. Um, I'm going to put that first. That one goes there. I've just lifted that with the roof off and it all tipped out so I spent five minutes sorting it out. Um, a really stupid thing I did yesterday was um, I picked up a charger for my battery new for, for the camera. Charger. A charger for charger. a spit. Oh, it's the charger I've never seen before. I've heard of concentric cable but I've never, I don't know what you would call this. Um, the conductors on the side here were used as neutrals and the slightly larger CSA conductors on this side were used as uh, earth or CPC and then in the middle you've got your line um, so yeah but I've uh, and of course you've got you've got a bit of a hiatus when you come out of the, the sheathing there and you you bring it into your sleeving You've got this bit at the bottom where the two bare conductors emerge. Um, I don't know if you can get this anymore, and if you if you can, what would you call it? Well, I haven't hoovered up yet, but my packs are back in order. This is uh, very good because I can I can shine these backwards. I can shine that up to the ceiling. That one and this one can shine forward. So then I can, if you see, I can light the back. Reflected light here in front, and if I don't think that's enough, I just boof it up a bit. 
um, still on the same battery as it was. Uh, we've only got one bar at the moment out of four, so it's, um, it's nearly out. But still, I'm really pleased with this uh, rocket light. Um, just a, a really good design. Just only thing is, it's it's not very well balanced. When you pick it up by the handle, it dips down in front. I believe the old ones. Well, I've just been looking on my laptop, and I don't have because I don't have the memory stick. I can't see what distribution board to name anything from the ICR. So it looks like I can't do any labelling. I can't do any testing. Um, so at whatever time it is, 5.15, 6.15, I'm going to call it a day. Um, right, let's stop. So it's sockets R1, R2, whereas 0.12. And and 10.5 is the ZS. And this is transferred onto another piece of paper. I will do. I will do this again.